women Air Force service pilots of World War II, fighting for equal rights in the Air Force. Jackie Cochran and Nancy Harkness Love showed the U.S. military that they, as women, could fly planes at speeds and altitudes that no man had ever flown before. Jackie Cochran and Nancy Harkness Love changed the lives of many female pilots during World War II. They challenged the perceptions of the men of the U.S. Army Air Force, the U.S. government, and sometimes their own families to achieve their dreams of being able to fly with male pilots and to help win the war for their country. Before America entered World War II, Jackie Cochran wanted to fly in the U.S. Army Air Force. She went to Eleanor Roosevelt, asking for her help in getting her own division in the Air Force. Although Mrs. Roosevelt could not help her directly, she said in her My Day speech, Women pilots, in this particular case, are a weapon waiting to be used. Eleanor Roosevelt. General Arnold stepped in and told her that there was no need for extra pilots in the U.S. at this time and told her to take her 25 women overseas to Great Britain to learn to fly in the Royal Air Force. While she was overseas, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. Suddenly, America desperately needed pilots at home, as male pilots were needed overseas when America entered the war. Nancy Love knew that as men were needed in the war, spots would open up for her and her pilots at home. She went to General Hap Arnold to ask if she could get a spot for her and her pilots in the U.S. Army Air Force. Since America now had a shortage of pilots at home, Nancy Love got her spot and formed the WAFs. When Jackie Cochran first heard about the WAFs after returning from the UK, she was very angry. She felt that Nancy Love took her one chance at flying in the U.S. Army Air Force. The U.S. government let Jackie join the WAFs, which, under Jackie's command, was renamed the Women Air Force Service Pilots. When the WAFs were formed, Jackie knew that the men she flew with or the government didn't think that she or her pilots were capable of flying like the men did. Jackie was positive that they could. She trained the women harder than they had ever expected. But even before they get a chance to take the polish off their nails, it's out onto a dusty Texas drill field with them. Right away, the Air Force wants to get a little muscle on those pretty arms. This scene provides a pretty fair picture of what the girls look like from uh, all angles. None of them are under 21 or over 35. They went through the same exact training that the men did, including ground school, physics, and Morse code. Even though they were limited to flying in the U.S., Jackie knew that the WASP would prove themselves. It felt like we had to prove ourselves every day. It was uh, because we were constantly being watched. In the end, they flew 60 million miles in over 70 different planes. The biggest impact the women had on the men was when two WASP, D.D. Mormon and Dora Daughtry, were asked to fly the B-29 bomber. Men were afraid to fly it after it killed Eddie Allen, one of Boeing's top test pilots and 18 people when it crashed in Seattle. The women were recruited by Paul Tibbetts. He sent the two women around the country to fly into the bases where the men were being trained to fly the B-29 to show them how easy it was, to almost shame them into it. The WASP had many other jobs that were given to them because the men didn't want to do them or thought that they were too dangerous. Many thought that if the women had the dangerous jobs, they would be afraid to fly and wash out of the program. The women knew that to prove themselves, they had to take every job that they were given. One of their jobs was towing targets behind their planes for the men to shoot at, either from the ground or from their planes. 38 WASP lost their lives serving their country. These are the WASP who died. We had to take up a collection to send the bodies home. And um, a girl, a classmate, would have to sit up all night in a boxcar, hot in summer and freezing cold in the winter, sit next to the coffin with her classmate to deliver the remains home to the family. And the family couldn't drape a flag on the coffin, and they couldn't put a gold star in the window. Women were given no benefits because they were not officially a part of the U.S. Army Air Force. Many of the men in the U.S. Army Air Force did not approve of the WASP. Some of the men made complaints to the heads of the Air Force, but that did nothing to stop the women from flying. Since some of the men did not want the women to continue flying, they took matters into their own hands. Two fatal crashes that the women had were later to be blamed on the men either lose screws and not put something back together properly. 
there was suggested sugar in the tank, put in the gas tank uh, of one of the airplanes that crashed. Jackie Cochran made many attempts to have the WASP become a part of the Air Force. When she made her last attempt in 1944, pilot training in the U.S. was no longer needed, and the men who had been training the pilots were now eligible to go overseas to fight in the war. Most of the men wanted to stay in the U.S. and wanted their old jobs back, jobs that were currently filled by the WASP. They went to the government saying the WASP were a waste of money and that they were being un-American by taking jobs from highly qualified men. The women were trained to fly many different planes, while men were normally trained to fly one or two. This made the women more qualified than most men. Since the women were not an official part of the Air Force, they were all let go so that the men could have their jobs back. There were men who believed that the women belonged in the Air Force and they fought for them to come back, but they too were outnumbered. The women were told to go home and resume their lives as housewives. You and more than 900 of your sisters have shown that you can fly wingtip to wingtip with your brothers. If ever there was any doubt in anyone's mind that women can become skillful pilots, the WASP have dispelled that doubt. I want to stress how valuable I believe the whole WASP program has been for the country. So, on this last graduation day, I salute all you and all WASP. We of the Army Air Force are proud of you, and we will never forget our debt to you. Hap Arnold, Commanding General, U.S. Army Air Force, last graduation of WASP, 1944. The war wasn't over. There was a lot of work to be done, and we couldn't really understand it. Some of us even volunteered that we would do it for nothing. We just wanted to keep flying. Women could not fly in the Air Force again until 1976. The WASP paved the way for female pilots today. Their courage let women of many races fly in the Air Force without discrimination from others. Women are serving in the Air Force today regardless of their color, even though they are not yet 100% equal with the men they fly with. I have met some opposition from other pilots and male pilots um, through either subtle or not so subtle direct ways to let you know that either they think you shouldn't be there or you can't achieve. Um, so uh, thankful for all that they did for overcoming the challenges uh, by proving they could fly. And I know that because of what they did in the past, I am able to do what I do today in the present. And they've also secured the rights of women in the future to keep uh, flying and being aviators in the Air Force and in the civilian world. Um, I think the um, gender or race prejudice today is, uh, it's not really outright, it's more subtle um, in the form of maybe mentoring or not having the leadership opportunities um, that you would want. Many African American pilots fly today, but like women, they are minority against male pilots. The WASP legacy lives on today, and women of many races will soon have a stronger presence in the Air Force. Nancy Love and Jackie Cochran were pioneers in the Air Force. They made it possible for women to achieve their dreams of flying with men and for minorities in the Air Force to be able to fly without discrimination. Their legacy lives today thanks to the brave pilots who continue to fly, even when they are different from the people that they may be flying with. Women Air Force Service pilots courageously answered their country's call in a time of need while blazing a trail for the brave women who have given and continue to give so much in service to this nation since. Every American should be grateful for their service and I am honored to sign this bill to finally give them some of the hard-earned recognition they deserve. Barack Obama. <laughs>